Hello third graders, Mrs. Hales here with your next art lesson. This week we're gonna be drawing cupcakes inspired by the artist Wayne Thebo. His name is spelled Thebod, but it's pronounced Thebo. Um, he's an American artist who's still living. He's in his 90s now. His style of work is called pop art, which means his work is influenced by things that are popular in the culture around him at the time that he's painting. So for example, he painted things like lipstick and candies and confections and donuts. A lot of his um, artwork is centered around food because he worked for a time at a diner, which is like a cafeteria style restaurant. And so he was influenced um, in his artwork by what was going on in his life. So here are some examples of his work. Pop art is a style of art that began in the United States and England in the 1940s and the 1950s. Um, pop art, the subject of pop art is usually things from everyday life like Campbell's soup can or a picture of a celebrity or things like food or candy or even um, comic strips and animals. The images in pop art are usually depicted or portrayed in a way where they're realistic enough that you can tell who they are or what it is, but it's not as realistic as a photograph would be. Um, the colors in pop art are usually very bold and bright and very colorful, just like um, in the case with Wayne Thebo. His, like his gumball machines and his hot dogs and his pies and cakes are very colorful. You want to draw an oval in the middle of your paper about the size of a long skinny egg. Then you want to draw two lines on either end of your oval that come down about two or three inches and then a curved line connecting those two lines at the bottom. Now the bottom of the oval, you wanna turn into your cupcake paper. So you wanna draw a zigzag line on the bottom of your oval that's gonna be your cupcake paper. The rest of the back part of the oval is gonna be your cupcake, so that should be round and smooth. You wanna make your cupcake giant, make the round part of your oval bigger like it's hanging over your cupcake paper. Next, you want to draw your frosting or your icing. I was thinking of a spiral or a swirl of soft serve coming out of the ice cream machine when I was drawing this. So I made these like S's and I scrunched them really close down together. Or you can have your icing look like a cloud. Then you want to erase the back side of your cupcake oval because you can't see that because of all the icing. I don't actually like to eat cherries on my cupcakes, but I thought it would be fun to draw one. So here it is. Um, I'll post a picture of all the different ways that you can draw icing up here and I'll also put this at the end so you guys can use it for reference. I know some of the papers that cupcakes are wrapped in can be super fancy so if you want to put some little illustrations on there like balloons or flowers or stars you can do that or if you just want to put the lines from the papers then you can just color them in with one color. I wanted my cupcake to be casting a shadow so the light source in this case would be on the upper left hand corner and my shadow would be on the right side beneath my cupcake. You don't have to do that or you could do a shadow and a plate if you want to put it on a fancy plate you're welcome to draw that as well. Now I'm going to clean up all the lines that I don't want on here, all my pencil lines that I don't need and I'm going to get ready to color. I really like the way Wayne Thebo uses really bright colors like lime green and turquoise on the white paper or the light blue paper that's wrapping his cupcake. And I also really like the way he used the bright yellow color to outline his frosting. So I don't want to copy him exactly, but I do want to take some of his ideas and incorporate them into my own artwork. So I'm going to outline my frosting with a dark pink. Um, crayon and I'm pushing down pretty hard so I get a nice thick color. I want to make my cupcake chocolate and then I'm going to color my paper in with turquoise and green. And I'm going to push down really hard so I get thick juicy color. I'm going to layer a bunch of different colors in my shadow, kind of turquoise colors and yellow and a little bit of pink in there. Um, you can play around with your shadow color and kind of make it whatever color you want. And then I wanted my frosting to be pink. 
with a little bit of highlights over on the left side that I'm going to achieve with um, lightening up my pink the pressure on my pink crown and then coming over top of that with white. Don't forget to color in your sprinkles and your cherry if you have one. Let's talk about color a little bit. So if you look at this color wheel here, you have your warm colors, which are red, orange, yellow, and a little bit pink and a little bit lime green. And then you have your cool colors, which are your purples and your blues and just your straight up greens. So if you want to, you could do warm color on the top in your icing and a cool color at the bottom like I did, or you could use complementary colors. Now, complementary colors are across from each other on the color wheel. So I have a greenish uh, paper on the bottom of my cupcake and then I used a pink which is a cross from lime green on the color wheel is pink. I used a pink um, color for my frosting. So I use complementary colors in my cupcake. Why are complementary colors important? Complementary colors make each other look really, really great when you put them next to each other. And the reason they do that is because there is none of that color in the opposite color. So for example, in pink, there is no green. And in green, there is no pink. So those colors look great when you put them next to each other. All right, boys and girls, have fun working on your cupcakes. Work hard. Think about your color scheme and your colors. Think about how you're going to draw your oval and your paper and your icing in your cupcake. See you next time.